your Bibles. We should always have our Bibles, even at a men's conference or a men's meeting breakfast. You should bring a, this. When I see this, I'm going to tell you guys, as a Christian, as a believer, as a pastor, when I see men with their sword, when you're with your sword, you know what you're telling me? I, I'm ready, baby. Come on. Who wants some feather? Come on, I got it. Because when we were in the neighborhood, you know what we carried at times, right? We were ready. If it was a knife, a bottle, a gun, whatever, you know, stick, you were ready. We're new, we're new soldiers in Christ. So we should be having our, you know, you don't go without to the football game without your helmet, right? They're like, is he crazy or what? He's going to get hurt. Have your sword. Have your sword. Have it ready. Amen? I know the phones are good. The phones are good, but they're, they distract you because your wife's going to text you during the music, during the message, don't forget the milk. You know, pick up the, the, uh, uh, the shirts in the, uh, in the uh, cleaners, right? Don't forget we have to be there by 12. So you tell pastor you have to be by 12. You know, stuff like that, you know. Forget all that stuff. Amen. So let's, next, next week, let's carry our Bibles. Amen. So when pastor sees you, you guys are not <laughs> Oh, look at that light bulb. It is so bright. <laughs> John 16, 33. We're talking about overcomers. Just for your thoughts, I'm going to say something. What is an overcomer? Don't, don't tell me. Just your own thoughts. Your own. Uh, Jesus, help me. Your, your own perspective, your own. Uh, yeah, the, the way you think of it, you know. Yeah, your interpretation. What do, you, what do you say about you? Are you an overcomer? Or are you a quitter? A lot of us were quitters before we were in the world, right? We quit on a lot of things, on our marriages, on our children, on jobs, good jobs we had. We quit good. I know I quit two good jobs. Right now at my age, I would be retired with a good, good pay. Because we we're at, we get angry. We got short fuses. Forget you, man. I'm out, man. I'll meet you in the parking lot. You know? Yeah, you just lost. Back then, those days, you know, you lost a $12 an hour job, which now equates to, you know, 25 30 bucks an hour. That's good money for guys that don't have high school educations. Come on, I'm ready, you know? Hey, man, I know some of you guys who make good money, $40, $50, $75 dollars an hour. I know some of you guys do that, but, you know, you guys like, oh, that guy makes 20 bucks an hour. For some of us, that's a lot of money. Amen. Amen. That's how we, that's how we feed our, 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 our kids, right? You know. So, uh, what is an overcomer? This is what the dictionary says on this one. Then I'm gonna read another one. A person who overcomes something, one who su- uh, su- uh, succeeds in dealing with and gaining control of some problem. Or difficulty. That's an overcomer. And we've all had our difficulties. We've all had our problems. We've all had our trials. Amen. And we know the trials are good. They may not seem good right there and then. But once we get past that difficulty, once we get past that trial, we're sharper for it. We're better for it now, right? We're wiser. If that, if that stove burnt you one time, you got to be a fool to go put your hand back on that. You know what I mean? When you were eight years old, I did that. When I was a little kid, I touched a hot iron boy. I was probably about seven, eight years old. My dad said, don't touch it. Don't touch the hot iron. You know what a hot iron is, right? Where they used to do soldering with the long iron, hot iron. Right. And what did pastor do? <laughs> Pow. Bam, oh, you know, dad, I'm sorry about that. Dad, dad said, you big old dummy, that's what you, that's what you get, you know? Because you gra- I grabbed that thing. It was hot. It burned my hand, you know? Did I ever do it again when I saw it there? My dad would put that thing purposely in front of me. Show me, you know, he, he, he would uh, plug it in for I can see it. 
and then walk away, and you're like, mm-mm, that'd be the devil right there. That's the devil, boy. So we learn from our mistakes. So we, sometimes we look at difficulties, trials, mistakes, our sins, like it's over, like we blew it. No, just for, for a moment. God's anger is just but for a moment. Amen? And then the joy comes in the morning. And the joy may not be 24, minutes, 24 hours. It may be next week. It may be next month. But one day you're going to be well. You're going to be whole. I know I'm going to, in Jesus' name, I said, I'm going to be fully healed. You guys are going to see me run around this place. I told you guys that. Amen? I'm telling you by faith. And you guys are going to say, Pastor, I'm doing a lot better than I was two, three months ago, brother. Amen. You know, amen? What God is doing. You know what God is doing. Right now, I'm, I'm preaching by faith, my brothers. <laughs> I believe in God, you know. I encourage you guys, too, to step out by faith. Something you want to do, step out. Something that God has asked you to do, something that God has told you to do, I encourage you. I challenge you as a man of God. Step out by faith. If it's a greeter at the door, you know. If you got to, Steve, if you got to bring a chair, you know, I'm going to greet, though. I'm going to do something different. Me and my wife, my beautiful wife, we're going to stand by the doors. And if I got to sit on a stool while I do it, I'll do it. That's faith. Because you're going to believe God that, you know what, I'm going to be able to stand. I couldn't stand for three weeks. Four weeks I couldn't stand because my leg was full of disease. And here I am. In Jesus' name, amen? So there's things that we go through, but you learn. Ya no comes chile. Chile will kick my butt, you know what I mean? The gout, the acid, it'll tear my whole system up. Can't have red meat like you used to, you know what I mean? Can't eat a pound of red meat, you know, carne asada. That's like six tacos right there, baby. Can't do that stuff. Come on, you know what I'm talking about, Amen. God teaches us this, and he teaches us how to become overcomers. You've overcome. I, if you think about what you've overcome in your life, I'm talking about from the day you were born to this very moment, what you've overcome. What have you lost that God has given back to you? He's given you freedom. He's given you uh, uh, sobriety, that you're sober now. And I'm not talking about from alcohol and drugs. I'm talking about your mind. Your mind is sober now. Now you can make a, a good decision without being hindered by pot or, or meth or, or alcohol or a woman or porn. You know, your mind won't get messed up on all that. Amen? You got a sober mind now. That, you know what? I don't even need none of that stuff. You know, amen? Because now you can think your, uh, clearly. You can make a godly decision now. Where before the devil had us, we couldn't make those decisions, right? Come on, Ma. He had you. You know he had you already, you know. You're going to do it anyway. Okay, if you say so. Now, no, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not hanging out. No, I'm not going that way no more. I mean, if I got to go around two blocks around the, wrong, the other way, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to pick up that phone call. Yeah, she's acting like she's my friend, but I know her motives. She wants to backstab my wife. She wants some of me. And no, it ain't going to happen in Jesus' name. Amen? When your friends, you know, you know what they're going to do. No, I'm not doing that, brother. And you tell little brothers that too. Little brothers, we don't do that. That is not the way we live. We live according to God's word. Every one of you there. Amen? Revelations 2 7 back there. Revelations 2 7. This is a new Bible. Someone bought me a Bible about two, three months ago now, brother. I got blessed with it. Amen. I, I put this I put this on Bible study on, on Thursday to the to the church. 
you, you, say you, know, you, you say you know Jesus. Oh, thank you, Mia. Right on. Thank you for your kindness. Uh, you say you know Jesus. A lot of people, oh, I know Jesus. You may know of him, but to know him is something different. Because if I was to call out anyone here and you tell me, how do you know Jesus? Tell me something about Jesus for another brother can learn. We should be able to have that in our heart. Jesus is my friend. I was never faithful. God taught me how to be faithful. I've never been loyal in my whole life. I cheated on every moment, every woman I've ever been on, I cheated on. But no longer. Now I'm a loyal man. I'm loyal to God now. I used to use his name in vain. I no longer do that now. Now I worship his name. God has changed. You should be able to have something like that in your heart. God has made me loyal. God has taught me how to be faithful. I'm not talking about perfect. I'm talking about spiritual. You're, you're perfect in Christ. So now your mind is being challenged. Your flesh against your spirit. Your flesh wants to do wrong. It wants to cuss. It wants to, get, it wants to stay bitter. It wants to walk around in unforgiveness. Oh, she did, dirt, did me dirty. My best friend, just, just cut it out. You got to forgive them. Has God forgiven you? Imagine every sin you've done, even the sin you haven't even told your wife. Come on, let's be real, right? The sin you haven't even told your brother, your priest, or your pastor. The one you have hidden. That's right. It's the one that will hinder you. And that's why we must confess our sins to one another. We have to. If you want to be free, you're going to have to say some names in your backyard, in your, sh- in your shower, in your bathtub, in your car. You're going to have to call out some names that did you dirty, that you, you, you're hurt about. Fulano, I forgive you in Jesus' name. Sutana, Sutana, I forgive you in the name of Jesus. I release you from any pain, any hurt you've caused me. I release you in Jesus' name. You got to mean it, and God will begin to heal you, that today your life can be changed. It could be your pops. I was angry at my father. I remember the, the year I was 27 years old when I, when I forgave my father. Not that he did me wrong or dirty, anything like that, but I just thought he was mean in my mind. I thought he was a roughneck. He'd sock you, you know, he'd slap you with his... With his he had gold rings on him, just boom, right on the side of your head. And you're like, man, and you want to get at him because you're a tough boy now. You're 17, 18 years old. You want someone, but you can't because that's your pops. Because I got five other brothers in front of me that <laughs> ain't going to let me do it, let that happen. So you learn that. So we have to learn to forgive in the spirit. You know, you're about to be married again, mijo. So you're going to have to forgive everything that's behind you. If not, it's going to hinder your future with that woman. With this new blind you're about to have, you're going to have to let go of fulana, sultana, let them go. And when they try to talk to you and and visit you on Facebook, Charlie, I'm married. You got to to be that man now. we're, We're not going to go there. I see a lot of men... On Facebook, you guys are going to erase me now again. It happens all the time. Because you, you guys are putting like on women that are showing all kinds of, you know, what is it called? With the cleavage, you know. They got the, they're standing there like, you know, got the, and you guys sitting there like, oh, like. Liking women that you know you shouldn't be, because if your wife knew you were hitting likes on that thing and done hit it like 10, 15 times, she ain't going to dig you, because you wouldn't dig it if she was doing it for you. Can I get an amen? Right? If her, if her ex was doing stuff and you're like, oh, I like him. I like, I like, I like. You're like, you done went crazy. You done went loco, girl, because that ain't happening. Right? 
But men do that stuff. We got to learn how to overcome that. We got to be stronger than that in Jesus' name. We got to learn to cast down every thought, every high imagination that comes against the knowledge of God, that it comes, exalts himself, tries to show himself stronger than God of your mind in Christ. You have the mind of Christ, the Bible says. That you think like Jesus Christ now. That's why when you think wrong and you think perverted and you think uh, greedy and you think jealousy and all that, that's the enemy trying to get at your mind. And if he gets your mind, he can move your, your body. He'll move your life. But if you say, you know what? I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. And you mean it. And you begin to speak that and begin to live that way. Not just be a hearer of the word. Be a doer of the word. Amen. This is when you become an overcomer. There's a lot of people. I, I read their stuff. I, that's why I'm saying a lot of you guys are going to erase me. I'm going to be removed. It's all right. I'm cool. I got enough friends already. I got about five. That's all I need anyway. Amen. <laughs> All you, need is, all you need is five, three good people, right? You know, I got 866 friends. Those aren't your friends. They're not your friends. They're just acquaintances there, you know. That's all. You ain't don't have no conversation with them. You have no relationship with them, you know, right? I know I don't. I got like 500 and some of them. I probably talked about five, probably, you know, all the time on, on Facebook. The rest I don't, you know. So we have to learn how to overcome these things by the power of God and by the spirit that lives within us. God has given you a spirit of life inside of you to overcome, to live. But it takes work. Got to read this, Aaron. Got to read this, Victor. Got to read it. George, got to read this. You know the face, the, uh, the uh, playbook. Right? Don't they give you a little playbook? Oh, you guys are probably smarter than uh, we had a playbook. A, a, a playbook. But you got to read all that. As a running back, you got to know all the holes. You got to know the, the blocks that they're about to make for you for you can get through these holes and things like that. You learn the, tro the, the playbook. Learn the book. Amen. For when someone does ask you, Johnny, can you tell me something about Jesus? Not right now, but. Can you tell me something about Jesus? One of your coworkers, I've heard him, bro. What do I do? Uh, uh, let me call Jeremy. You know? No. You got the answer. Who's the answer? Jesus. Jesus. Amen? So here we go. Revelations 2. It's a, a test of knowing him. Verse 7. He says, brothers. I write no new commandment to you. This is nothing new. A lot of us think that, oh, we're getting all kinds of new stuff coming out. It's not new. It's new for you, but it's not new for God. Right. Amen? It's not new to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning, the word of God. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you which thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Our old is going away. You're getting older every day. Right now you youngsters ain't even thinking about your 20s or 30s. Or, I didn't either. I was playing Little League Baseball like you and I was an all-star player, catcher, and never thought about that stuff. Now, man, when my right knee is bumming out, I'm like, oh, my God, it's a drag getting older, you know. <laughs> but our faith is in God. No matter what goes on to this, build, this building, this body, we know it's dying every day. But we're being grown up, grown up every day in the spirit. That's why it's funny when I hear men telling four-year-olds, three-year-olds, Six-year-olds, even 13, 14-year-olds, act your age. That's what they're doing. They're acting like a 13, 14-year-old. They act like five-year-olds. That's what they are. They're kids. 10, yeah, 10, 12. 16, you're acting like a kid. You are a kid. 
And then give them a break. Give them some, you know, give them some instruction. Give them some wisdom. Instead of putting them down and laughing at them or, or putting them down, no. Give them some wisdom. You already went through it. You know what life's about. Right, Jess? Now it's time to change, to share that. Share that love. Share that wisdom Amen. with your nephews, your friends, your co-workers. They don't know. Wow. You know. You got a lot of wisdom. Amen. Got a lot of gift to, to give out. Amen? Amen? This is how we should live. The word overcomer in, the, in Greek means to be victorious, prevailing, conquering overcoming that's what you are you're a victorious person you're a prevailer you you prevail in whatever you do you're a conqueror you're more than a conqueror in christ overcoming i'm gonna give you guys a very simple thing about over an overcomer your wife is an overcomer for a lot of you because you give her the check Right? Or, or you drop the, the check in. I'm not just saying that's wrong. I'm not saying that. I'm just giving you an example of what a conqueror is. You may put your, your whole ch- check in her checkings, and you guys do business out of that. She's the one that gets the check, though. So you're a conqueror, but she's more than a conqueror. <laughs> she's the one that's writing it. Amen? Just a little... A little something there, amen? Every one of us knows that we have troubles and turbulations, difficulties in our lives. But you must, you must also know that God gives you a peace and he gives you a victory in your life. He does. I struggled as a pastor when they were telling me what they were going to, you know, put a new valve in me. They were going to open up my neck and all this and that. That's scary. Because they make you sign papers that, you know, if you die, they're not responsible for it. You know what he told me? He says, if I move this nerve in your neck wrong, I can mess up your whole face. It could be distorted. He says, if I hit this valve, if I hit this nerve, he goes, I can mess up your speech. He goes, if I hit this nerve, you could lose your sight. That's how delicate those things are. He goes, so we as surgeons have to be very, very delicate with our hands. And I was praying for soft hands. I said, Father, give them soft hands, baby. Because when you're playing at third base, remember, you've got to have soft hands. You've got to have soft hands to play third base. That's what we always say. they got soft hands, third base. Because the ball's coming fast, but he knows how to con- control that ball real softly. Amen. Exactly. Same thing with us. Our words can control things. You have the power of death and life in your tongue. And the Bible says you'll eat the fruit of it. And you'll say, ah, I don't believe that. Look at your life. Examine your life right now if you want to be honest. And this is how you live and this is how you live because of what you've had spoken so thus far. Is a witch, man. She, you won't tell her to her face. And she is mean. She's vicious, bro, man. Even in your mind, man. Oh my God, how did I marry her? And then you see all that in action, and you're like, what the heck? Your mouth. It just made her who she is. But if you say she's beautiful, she's kind. And it takes practice that I love her, I respect her, I honor her. That's my woman. That's right. That's, amen? She is my woman of virtue. She's my woman of faith. Hey, she may act like that, Jesse. You may be looking at her like, mm. by faith. Your daughter, your son, you wonder why they trip, why, why they are like that. The fruit, when the, when the fruit falls, let me give you an example. I'm a fruit, and this is a fruit. falls right there, the fruit. The fruit doesn't go like this. It doesn't go like that. The fruit falls right next to it. 
my son Angel was just the way I was when I was in the world. Angry, bit, bitter, a fuse, boom, make you jump like that. Just like some of you were. Right? So I said, come on, George, you know, amen. I'll smile in here, but, you know, say the wrong thing. It's, it's on, right? Most of us here. The mouth will give the fruit of its root. So we got to learn how to overcome those things, our thoughts, our words. If you don't have nothing nice to say, a fool is known by his quietness. He's considered wise because a fool speaks everything that's in his mind. And uh, that's why I always say, all I got to do is just speak to you for 15 minutes. That's why some of you guys don't want to talk to me. <laughs> hey, Pastor. Have a blessed day, Pastor. And I'm like, dang, man. I don't even know this, brother. All I know is his name, man, you know. Because you don't want to be found out. But the Bible says if we want our sins to be uh, uh, in, in light it, we have to confess those things. And we have to confess them to God. And this is how we overcome. By changing our attitudes, our words, our minds. And many of you are still stuck. I hear you guys. You guys are stuck. Still in the same conversation, in the same way, the same attitude. I'm a new person in Christ, yeah. Well, let's let's be let's be different. I said I took I saw a picture of what's working. All of us are working here, fixing the drain, right? One of my brothers, you know, they take a picture from behind. It's me and two other brothers, and he he doesn't even know because he's behind us. But you know, I'm looking at it like there goes the penguin. Why can't we just stand straight like an athlete? You don't stand like that, right, Aaron? You, Jesus, right? You know. When you play around, you know, but, you know, like this, right? I'm, a, I'm an athlete. Take a picture. Sometimes you want to take a knee, right? You take a knee like an athlete. I know I did when I was a kid. You take a picture, you know? God is doing something, and he's teaching us how to overcome. This is a disciple class. It's called a men's, a men's minute meeting, but it's a discipleship. We're learning about Jesus Christ, his word, and the way we're to live. And, you know, when, when you get older, 10 years from now, Juan, you'll be 27, 28. You'll be ready to be married. I said 10 years from now. Not 10 days, not 10 months. 10 years. You know what I'm saying? You'll, you'll have a house. You'll have money. You'll have your little cars and all that, even though that's not all of it. But you know what? God will make you rich as long as you continue to bless God. And bless your brothers and people around you. Really. God will bless you. And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about a joy. A smile. Look at your picture. Look at a picture when you just on Facebook. Man, what happened? Oh, I was smiling on the inside. Well, it should be showing on the outside. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. God gives us that, pers- that perfect peace. He says in, in this scripture right here, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And he also added this to it. I will that you should overcome the world. God's will is that we overcome this system of this world. Of how we live. One of my little young brothers, you know, he was a vato. Came straight from the joint to here. Came straight from prison, straight to, to church and never left. You know, you know what he told me one time? Because I was joking around with him. He says, Pastor, I'm not a cholo no more. I said, Woo wee. That was that was powerful for me. He said, right on. And you don't have to be a cholo and change your ways. You can be a man that was angry. A man that walked with unforgiveness. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, thank you, sir. Our, our, our minds, we have to renew our minds to transform our lives, to change our lives. But we must be in this book. You have to be a teacher. You have to be a, a, a student. You have to be one who studies this word, takes notes. Honest to God, no bragging or boasting. If you go to my house, you're going to see a note on my coffee table. And it has notes. When you read, when you hear a, a message on, on YouTube, you know, you put on your, and you're, I start writing notes. The Spirit of God begins to speak to me because he speaks to you if you're listening. Those who have ears hear, right, with the Spirit. You, you write that down. Invest in yourself. Aren't you? Because you're going to say, I'm a remember. Huh. Exactly. Next month, like, I mean, next week, you're like, or next day, you're like, what would you say, Lord? Right? Oh, man, I can't remember. Oh, Lord, I, I do this. David, my this is what I say. Father, give me the. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, yeah, or the mind. Give me the mind of Jesus Christ that I remember what I, what I said or what you said. And I, yeah, right. <laughs> sometimes it does and sometimes he does. He doesn't. Because we have to take notes. It started off. Overcomer. That's where it started off. And I got three pages. That's where it starts off, just with a thought. Because I ask, what do I, what do I give your men? That you're overcomers. You're a victory. Even you're wearing that uh, Ram jersey. You're a victor. The Rams know what it is to, have, to be Super Bowl champions, the one who's there. They know that. No one will ever steal that from them ever again. They'll remember 22, right? Just like you, when you have a victory, you're going to remember that victory in Jesus' name. I, I know you Raiders, I know what you guys are thinking. I already know you guys. Uh, yeah. Oh, nice. You weren't, even, you weren't even born in 83, some of you. Guys. <laughs> yeah, I was born in 82. <laughs> I want you to know this. I wrote this down. Overcoming the world is not one defining, defining moment in life. You don't just have, it doesn't happen to just one time. You may overcome some things, but a lifetime of moments that are defined in an eternity. It's lifetime. Every day. Every day we're repenting. Every day you should be repenting. Every day you should be loving on somebody. Every day you should be forgiving somebody, forgiving yourself, just for you can learn how to grow up. Amen? Because you'll beat yourself up until you're nothing. You will. You'll, you'll beat yourself up. To, you, you'll beat yourself out of confidence. For you guys that were Tough guys and, and, and mean guys. Uh, re reason why we punch people? You know why you punch people without no reason, really? Because they got you mad. They said the wrong thing, so I'm going to punch you now. I'm going to knock you out. Instead of forgiving them. I broke my hand three times in fights. And now I'm paying the price. Forgive. And if we were to forgive, we wouldn't be so quick to react. As an overcomer, you must learn how to respond. You got to be a responder. Can I get an amen? Amen. The blessings of the Lord have promised these things to us who overcome, who overcome the world. These are the blessings and the promises of God when we overcome the world. It says that we'll be clothed in white, amen, in his name. Our names will be written in the Lamb's book of life, amen. Those are the blessings. If you confess the Lord, he's going to confess you. That's the blessing. 
Too many of us have our eyes on the earth instead of eternal life. The church is being taught totally different now. It's, all, it's grab what you can and be who you can and forget about Jesus and eternal life. We don't, tell no, we don't talk to nobody about eternal life no more. I know I'm saying, I'm speaking good because everything's quiet. We got to learn to let people know what the goal is, what is their last de destination is eternal life. Jesus Christ. You've been forgiven and you received Jesus Christ. He is the resurrection and the life. Without him, we're nothing. There is no eternal life. I don't care. You can have the biggest house, the prettiest motorcycle, you know what I mean? You can have uh, uh, season tickets to the Yankee games, whatever. But if we don't have eternal life, what good does it do us? And if we can't share eternal life with other people, what are we sitting here for then? It's to, it's to share eternal life with somebody. The forgiveness of their sins. Amen? You know, they, they, they'll ask me these questions. Oh, do you speak in tongues? Do, do you prophesy? What's that got to do with eternal life? That's the enemy trying to distract you in another conversation, in another way that you won't finish the conversation about eternal life and repeat, uh, receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You tell them receive Jesus and they say, oh, well, how many tongues do you have? Do you prophesy? Do you lay hands on people? Do you guys fall down and all that? Forget all that noise. Are you saved, my brother? Have you asked God to forgive you for your sins? That's the question we should be asking. Is eternal life yours? Have you received the promise of God for eternal life? Well, I can prophesy. I can give a lot of money away. Does you no good? If you lose your soul at the end. Amen? I want to ask you guys this question. Is it possible to overcome the world and receive the blessings? For some people, it's, it's impossible. For man, it is impossible. Well, with God, all things are possible. So the, que the, the question is, is it possible to overcome the world and receive the blessings? Yes. Because if you read the book of Revelations, they lasted and they won. Right? They overcame by what? By the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. What they said at the end. Even unto death. All of us aren't even ready to die. We're, we're afraid to die. We want to go to heaven, but we don't want to die. I don't know how you're going to do that, but you tell me how it's done. And we got to learn to die to ourselves here on earth. You got to die to pride. You got to die to be prejudiced. You know I mean, you got to die to all that. To be greed, greedful, lustful. You got to die to. Jesus Christ paid the price already. And if he's our Lord and he's our example, then we should be following him. And that same example, right? We should be walking in forgiveness. That's why I said we should be hugging each other when we see each other. Because, Steve, I don't know if it's the last time I'm going to see you, Steve. And you don't know if it's the last time I'm going to see you. You weren't there in that surgery room when they told me this. It could happen. I just have to let you know this. Or even if I didn't die, I could have been a whole different person. I could have came out of that surgery without a voice. Could have came out like this. Stroked out. And that your life would have been changed. My life would have been changed forevermore. Amen. But God is merciful. And you learn to cry out to God. I mean, from your heart. You're, you're just sitting there and tears are coming down your eyes, man. Thank you, sir. You're just coming down. And my wife's tripping because, you know, she's walking, she lives there. She, what are you crying about? Couldn't even talk to her. I'm like, I'm, I'm good. 
I'm good. I'm good, girl. Just leave me alone. I'm good. Because the spirit of God's presence is in that room, man. What are you going to do but cry? You're going to sit there and brag and boast about what you got before God? Put those crowns and just cast them to your feet, to God's feet. Because there's nothing greater than what we were reading. Nothing else. Nothing else but Jesus. I'm not here for your blessing. I'm here to worship you. Amen. If you do, it says, if you seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, all these things will be added on to you. If, but you got to seek God. How many of us are truly seeking God on a daily basis? How many of us are, are living righteously before God? Amen. How many of us are truly giving God our best? I, I mean, don't raise your hands. How many of us in our heart are truly giving God 100? Because don't we say this, Johnny, huh, Jeremiah? Don't we say, keep it 100. Keep it 100, my brother. Keep it 100. Keep it 100. Let's keep it 100. The altar should be full. Here at Turning Point Fellowship, everyone should be. There should be more people at the altar than they are sitting down. Because you know what? Because you glorify God. Amen. And you're grateful and thankful. And I know, I know, some of you naysayers, I know you guys are. Oh, we don't have to go to the altar, Pastor. God knows my heart. I sit here and I worship God of my own. Don't tell me that God, God knows your heart. Because if God showed his heart on that screen... Take that pro, that uh, uh, pro, uh, pro, pro, P-R-O-N, what is it, porn. Take that porn off. Yep. We would put that thing black. Put a sheet over that thing, man, you know. That's why we come with grateful hearts, thankful hearts to the altar. Father, thank you. If I didn't say thank you today, I want to say thank you today, Lord, for the forgiveness of my sins for my life. If I never just said, I love you, Lord, I love you, I love you. That's why we say, love you, but we don't say, I love you. You guys don't think I, I'm a word man, but I, I listen to your words. Read what you say. I said, this brother can't even tell my other brother, I love you, my brother. Love you. It is too, that's too masculine if I say, I love you. I hug Tony. I say, I love you, primo. And we sit there, we hug, and we cry. Fernando, Ralph, when I say, when I'm text, I love you. Tell Brother Joe. Joe's a, a hard neck for me, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, but I, Joe, I love you, man. I love you, my brother. I appreciate you. I appreciate your life. Pastor Eric, when we always talk, right, Eric? I love you, Pastor Eric. We got to learn to say, I love you, Juan. I love you, Juan. J.D. and J.J., I love you guys. Love you guys. We got to learn to say that to each other. Amen? Amen? We must learn to resist the world. Real, real quick now. John, uh, James 4, 7. James 4, 7, up on the screen. Amen? There it is. Therefore, submit to God. That means surrender to God. Give God what is due him. Resist the devil and he will fly, uh, flee from you. But you got to resist the devil. You got to learn to say no. Not doing that. You told, your, you told your fiance that she would be one, you will be one with her. She would be your wife forever now. So you can't be checking out other people now. Because how would you like it if she did what you did? I'm not saying he's doing that, but imagine that. You ask someone to marry you, then you're over here at the, at the uh, uh, drinking fountain, and the secretary comes up, and you're, hey, girl, what's that? Day, man? How you doing, girl? Yeah, you look nice. Yeah, you look real nice. Imagine if someone was doing that to your fiancé or to your wife. 
Exactly. Uh-uh. He's saying, uh-uh. We got to learn how to resist all that. I'm going to teach you guys something here real quick that I was taught years and years ago, 27 years ago. When you see a woman coming and you, you look, because you see her coming, pretty girl. When she gets real close, untie your shoe and go down and tie it. Let, temp walk, let temptation walk by. Flee, resist it. That's a little exercise. You know, you're, you're driving and you see that little girl right next door to you. You just look the other way, look straight ahead in Jesus' name. Resist. You want to, but you resist that now. Amen. The Bible says draw close to God, and he's going to draw close to you. The next verse, Mio. that's an eight right there. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Amen. When the enemy tries to stick his noise, his nose, his noise, his nose into your affairs, resist him. Don't let him get up in your business. Don't let him know what you're thinking. Don't say what you're thinking. Amen. Don't do that. The Bible says, therefore, submit to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. He'll leave. He'll leave from your presence because that's how much authority and power you have. And I've given you this before with my dogs. I have two big dogs and they will go after you, my dogs will. I have a cane corso and I have an American bulldog. One weighs 150 pounds, one weighs about 85 pounds. They're big dogs. And they're, and they're guard dogs. I trained them to guard and take care of my yard. I don't have them because, you know, their name is Fluffy and all that stuff. You know, they earn, their, they earn their keep. But when I tell him to shut up and I tell him to go in the house, he goes in the house. Then they become like little poodles or chihuahuas. Because you know? they know your voice. Same thing with the enemy. When you tell the enemy, shut your mouth in Jesus' name. Get out of here, go. You have no power. You have no authority here over my mind, over my mouth, over my emotions. You have no power, no authority. Leave now. He withers just, I mean, he wimpens just like a dog. Just like you, you guys have dogs, right? You have dogs. You tell that German shepherd that's the mean one. Get over there. I hope he doesn't try to bite you, right? He listens to you, right? Boom. Even when he sees you, he's like, oh, my God, this guy's going to kick me. You know, they know your little dog. What's your dog's name, Joe? That little peanut. What's it called? Milo, yeah. It's like always barking. <laughs> you know, I tell him to be quiet. He doesn't, he's barking at me. He, Joe says be quiet, didn't he? He's quiet because he knows his voice. The same thing. The enemy knows your voice. And you know God's voice. That we follow him, amen? And this is how we overcome. You speak to the enemy like he's a dog. You don't reverence him. You don't look at him like he's royalty. He's not. He's the enemy of God. And some of you think it's a toe-to-toe fight. Oh, God and the, and the devil are going toe-to-toe. <laughs> not even. It's like one of your grandkids, you know, trying to, Go toe-to-toe with you. You're like, kick back. Yeah, exactly. You know, what are you doing? Trying to get all crazy. You know, right? It's just like you when you have your kids, right? Grandkids, step back. You know, they're mad at you. I'm mad at you. You took my ice cream or you didn't buy me an ice cream. You can be mad all you want. You're not going to get it. We got to grow. Amen? I'm going to finish right there. How do we resist the temptation of the devil? I'm going to give you five things in closing. If you want to write this down, write it on your, your phone. Because I know you guys are still on your phone. <laughs> One day you guys are going to listen, amen, in Jesus' name. I'm not taking my phone. I'm going to resist that, that phone in Jesus' name. That ain't the devil. That's just the thing that the enemy may use or you may use it in yourself, right? We always want to blame the devil for everything, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I eat salsa and I eat uh, uh, shellfish. 
with your clams and shrimp and lobster. If I eat too much, it'll tear me up. God will hit me. And I can't say, oh, the devil made me eat this lobster. The devil, it's the devil's fault. But I'm putting the tortillas and the tacos down and all the chili. Like, mm, it ain't the devil's fault then. Until that stuff hits my body, then you're like, oh, my God. And I'm telling myself, how oh, dumb, stupid you are. Is this worth it? That's why these time you guys are offering me red meat. I'm like, uh-uh. No way. I said, I'm not going through this pain no more. A whole month, man, I went through this stuff. I, you know, you gotta, there's a day that you got to learn. Amen? You got to learn, you know, in Jesus' name. Here we go. Number one. You got to learn to pray for strength. The Lord will strengthen you in your faith. Strengthen you in your wisdom and your righteousness in Christ Jesus. This is all in Christ Jesus. It's all in him. And it's in you. You're one with Jesus. Amen? I said you're one with Jesus. Amen. Encourage one another. We should be encouraging one another. Even encouraging the brothers at work that aren't your Christians in Christ, your brothers in Christ. But you can encourage them to live a better life, a good life. And one day, brother, you're dropping a seed, and then one day they're going to begin to serve the Lord. So we encourage one another and we support one another. That's number two right there. You got to learn to support. And we have a great support. Uh, uh, group here in this church. I, we have three men right here, three men that uh, have a list of 20 men each. And they minister to men every day. Every morning, Brother Fulano gives a, a scripture, Brother Sutano gives a scripture, and Brother Oscar, I hope there's not an Oscar in here, gives a, gives a scripture to these men. And they read that scripture and they're blessed of it. And I believe that they give that to somebody else. That you just don't keep it for yourself. That you know what? My wife needs to hear this. I'm going to text it to her. My sister, my mom, my aunt, my co-worker. Until they tell you to take you off. I've been, I've been told people by that many times. Pastor, take me off that list. I don't want to hear that stuff every day. I said, right on. You're gone. Ain't no bad, you know, ain't no, I'm not mad or nothing like that. You know, it's their loss, not mine. Amen? Because you're trying to feed them some, some life. So encourage one another and support one another. Three, share your faith in God. Don't share your faith in your faith. You share it in God, what God has done, what he's doing, what he's about to do, what you're believing him for him to do. Some of you need jobs. You tell him, Father, you said according to your word that you would meet every one of my needs in Jesus' name. I, I, I'm not desiring a word. I need a job. But I do need the right job. I need a job with some benefits because I have kids. I need enough money to support my children and myself. You may not be able to put a lot of money away in the bank, but 20 bucks a week, 20 bucks every two weeks, you got to learn how to side, uh, save some money. Some of you guys just spent all your money, man, and come Friday, you broke again. I'm like, oh, my God. That happened when we were 17, 18, 19 years old. Even my little brother Juan, he knows better than that, right, you know? Put some money away, right? You save a little, spend a little, and you give a little. That's how we should be living as, as Christians. You save a little, you spend a little, and you give a little. You should always give money. And I'm not saying in the church, but you, save some, you shake somebody's hand. You find out a brother's hurting, you know, go over there, give him a 20. Give him a 50, give him a 100. It happens. I shake people's hands all the time, and it comes back. It's always coming back. Never stops. All of a sudden, someone just writes a check or shakes my hand, and I'm like, oh, praise God. You cash that, and you keep some, and you give some. Right here in the church. I just be... Worshiping, I look at Juan, the Lord says, go ahead and bless him. You go over there, you know, at the church, shake his hand and let him be gone. You know? Amen. They can do whatever they want to do with it. I can't tell them, oh, don't go buy drugs and don't, you know. 
I just did what God asked me to do. Amen? Four, listen and obey to the Holy Spirit. He's speaking. A lot of people listen, but they don't obey. That's wisdom. Wisdom is listening and obeying. We can hear the word, but if we don't move on it, we don't uh, action on it. That's the word I can come up with. If we can action on it. You guys know what I'm saying, right? You know, if we can do this word, we're going to be better for it. I, I know every one of you, every one of you men that have been married or have a girlfriend, I know that the Lord has said, hug your wife. At the worst time, right, after an argument or a disagreement, you're sitting there and you're watching the football game. All of a sudden, you just hear, why don't you get up and hug her? Hmm. Oh, yeah, there it is, football, touchdown. <laughs> we shine, you know, we shine on what God is saying. And if we just obeyed, right, out, if we just obeyed. Hey, Mama, I just want to say I love you. Just grab her hands. I just want to say, don't say, oh, the Lord. No, God told it for you to tell him, you know, or her that, right? I love you. I wanted you to know I love you. You're beautiful. I'm a mess. I'm not talking about that. I'm not even worried about that. I love you. Imagine how blessed your wife would be. I'm Ricky, if you just woke up in the morning and say, what's her name, you know? Your wife. Lauren, she has a beautiful smile. When you see that lady, bang, man, just a big old smile. Imagine if you walked up and just say, Lauren, I love you, girl. I love you. She would probably like, what the heck? She probably pass out. What the <laughs> Do you tell her that, right, man? Amen, yeah. We should. Amen? So listen and obey the spirit. Last one. Get into your spirit or get into your secret place. You got to have a place that's God's in your place. Your car, your shower, your backyard, the garage. Huh? Yeah, your man cave. Yeah. Kind of a distraction, but mankind, man cave, right? Your big truck. Pull over when you're pulled over. You know what? I'm going to give God five minutes right here. This is my secret place. You, Aaron, you, Jacob, you, Jesus. When I'm in the shower, Father, I just want to talk to you. And you get out, your sister's like, who are you talking to? You crazy or what? Yeah, talking to God. My son always tells you, he doesn't, he's next to me where my tub is at, and he hears me like, hey, hey, who are you talking to? I'm like, God, boy, you know that, you know, because he hears me. And then he was like, Dad, you were in that bill, in that bath for two hours. I said, I'm going to spend eternity with him, man. What's two hours? Amen. I have a soaking tub. I, I got blessed by my wife with a soaking tub, a six, a six uh, footer. I'm only five and a half, so <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of room in there, baby. Uh, goes up all the way right here, brother. Just drop some bombs in there. <laughs> those, no, those kind of bombs, man. Those Navarros, man. That's the Navarros right there, huh? <laughs> there are other, what are they called? The, yeah, bath bombs. That's what I drop in, guys. <laughs> And they have good, they have a good uh, smell, you know. And they, they relax your muscles, you know. They relax your body. And you just lay there and just put on some good music, soft music, instrumental Christian music. I just let it, yeah, exactly. Or the word, whatever you want to do. I just put on it's instrumental music. No words. And it just plays, like, for three hours. And I just put it in my tub right at the edge, and I just sit there and, Shabri I love you, my father. You're all that I need in my life. You are my overcomer, Lord. You have taught me how to overcome. You've taught me how to win. Even when I thought it was over, when I thought it was done, Lord, 
you gave me victory. So I just want to say, I don't know what I'm saying, but in my heart I'm saying thank you. I bless you. I love you. I'm grateful for my life. Because I almost had my life lost many times. And this time it, it was, I, you know, when they pulled guns out of me and shot at me when I was a kid, I didn't, you didn't even think about it. You know, you go back and start doing your party and all that stuff. But here, you know, now you're 62 years old and your life's, exactly, this is it. It could be it right here, Steve. That's what I was thinking six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. This could be it. But Father, not my will, but your will. I ask you for my life. I don't want to die, Lord, but if, if you think it's that time, I'm ready. But you know what, Father? I do want to live. I want to bless this church. I want to bless my wife. I want to bless my kids. I want to see my grandkids grow up and have children. Why can't I? You guys can. Why can't I? Amen. Amen. Because my kids are still little, you know. Why can't I have my grandkids have babies, you know? Imagine when Mia is going to be married and have kids 10 years from now, 15 years from now. You're going to cry. You know, I cried when Sandra got married, my daughter got married. I was crying, walking her to the altar. I remember her little, you know, uh, kindergarten. You remember on, C uh, uh, on Sentry, you know, she used to have those little ponytails. And all these, my, her mom used to dress her real pretty, little girly. She was always a little girly girl, you know. And that's what I was remembering. And the same thing with us. Remember the goodness of God. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord God is good. You've overcome. You've overcome a lot of things in your life. Joel, you've been through a lot of stuff in your life, and you're here. Imagine that. Huh? Steve, you've been through a lot of stuff in your life, and you're here, brother, by the grace, the goodness of God. Come on, Eric. Come on, Pastor. You know. Bird, you know. Been through some stuff, huh, Tony? And you're here. Thank you. Thank you, Father. We're here. We're overcomers. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Overcomers, man. Don't forget, guys, uh, tomorrow we have church at 9 o'clock. Tomorrow's our potluck uh, uh, day, potluck. Don't forget that. that uh, it's breakfast. The, the, the theme is breakfast. So uh, don't come up here with uh, your other stuff. Come, come with some. Yeah. There you go. Oh, 10 o'clock. I said 9 o'clock. Well, keep it at 9 o'clock. Because you guys are going to be here at, be right now. Oh, we're, we're in time. It's 10 o'clock. Yeah, you are. It, it is 10 o'clock. But, you know, 930. Shoot for 930. Shoot for 930. <laughs> he knows I love him, man. I, I, I love Tony, man. My primo, man. I'm always hugging on him and crying, man. We always, we always cry, a bunch of crybabies. Man. But that's the love of God now. Imagine when you begin to just cry. Uh, well, remember when you just begin, to, when you just start crying, you're driving and think of the goodness of God inside your spirit and tears just are coming down. No reason. Just because of the love of God. Huh, Jess? Think about your life and the goodness of God. You can just sit there and cry. You know, your eyes get all watery. You're like, man, God has been good to me. I've lived a good life. I didn't make the best of it, but what I have today, Amen. right, Ed? Amen. I have a good life. Oh, yeah. Amen. A good life. So tomorrow we're going to have this right here, our breakfast potluck. Come on out. Uh, don't come empty-handed, guys, like a lot of us do. If you don't, if you don't cook, buy something. Buy some uh, soft drinks. Buy some waters. Buy some ice cream. Amen. You know, you can buy a big gallon of ice cream for the kids. For us, it's cold. For them, it's not. 
It's cold. Well, it ain't for you. It's for the kids. Amen. They'll eat ice cream anytime. It could be raining. They're going to eat ice cream. They did anyway last time, right? We're in the kitchen with the young teenagers. They went out, Pastor, we want some ice cream. They went and got some ice cream, man. I'm like, man, these guys, it's good. Amen? So I just encourage you guys that. Hug on somebody before you leave. Introduce yourself to someone. If you already did and, you know, you think they forgot their name, it's just good to say your name, my name. You know, amen? That way they know. We want to take a picture with you guys, too, after, right here in front. Take a picture uh, of, our, of our group here, uh, men of a higher standard. So we have that. And every first Saturday, there's a men's breakfast, you know, every first Saturday of the month. Every first Saturday. Next February, the first Saturday, invite a friend. Amen. There's power in an invite. Amen. Just inviting one person yes, makes sir. a difference. Amen. We have a rise men of, of God back there. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Eric. He's part, of, he's part of our church here at Turning Point Fellowship. He joined us over uh, just a little bit over a year ago. But he came with a, 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 a ministry already, a men of a rise. He goes around all California, from northern California all the way to south California. Even he's, he's already uh, went to Nevada. We'll be going to Nevada again. The team, when I say we, because I'm part of his team, all of us who go, we're part of his team. And... Uh, uh, just, uh, we're going to support them. Like I said, let's encourage one another. Amen. You know, hey, I've never been to one. I want to go. It's a different. There's, there's different ministers there. Different people. Amen? Amen? It'll blow your mind when you see the, the brothers from up north and all that. You know, some of you hard-hit. Some of you hard hit guys. <laughs> you sit there and you laugh. I'll tell you guys a story, but it's beautiful. Amen? Amen? I was hugging on them brothers, man. Yeah. Amen. All right. Amen. Praise God. He, he doesn't have football. He has Jesus in there. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go ahead and close it up. And then uh, if there's food, there's food there you guys can eat. After, uh, next door, there's drinks and stuff like that if you want a fellowship. If any of you guys can just help us uh, break it down, you know, the, the, the tables and all that. They'll, they'll tell you guys what to do and the chairs and things like that. But if you see two... Two tables uh, uh, set up with men there. Don't, don't ask them to move. We'll, we'll do it. Let them fellowship. Amen. Our church, you guys didn't know that, right? We, we, don't go right? we don't go home. Right after this meeting, we will be here until 2, 3 o'clock. Our men will not go home. Our church doesn't go home. Right, Eric? He, he, he learned that. Yeah, <laughs> Pastor Eric. Amen. <laughs> yeah. uh, he goes, I'm going home. No, you're not. <laughs> We, uh, we fellowship till 4, 7 o'clock in, in the evening. Right. Our church is over at 12, and we'll be here till 7 o'clock. Yes, Just fellowshipping. We'll go buy pizza. We'll buy chicken. We'll buy, like I said, ice creams. And the, people, the family stays there. be 20, 15. We stay there and have a good time. Right. It's fellowship. Brothers, you know, instead of going to watch a football game or staying home and watch Netflix, you can kick back and, right? Danny, uh, Fellowship with your family, man, your brothers in Christ. Amen. Father, we love you, we bless you, we honor you, Lord. We thank you for the word that has fallen on good ground. Holy ground, Lord God, the seed of your word, Father, fallen on the hearts of every man here, upon their hearts and upon their souls, Lord. Father, I'm believing, Father, that change has come. That love, gentleness, meekness, kindness, Father, wisdom, justice has been dropped, Father, into their hearts to change their hearts and change their lives, Lord. Father, when they leave this place, I pray they'll never be the same. I'll pray, Father, that they walk with a, a bounce in their step tomorrow morning at work. I pray that they're the first one there and having a smile, Lord. Buying someone they don't even know a, 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 a car, a, Cocking, uh, coffee, yeah, thank you, coffee table, uh, cake, cup. Ay, yeah, yeah. never mind. <laughs> Father, we just, <laughs> Father, I just pray that you bless these men, Lord, that you watch over them, over their families, over their children, their grandchildren, Lord. I pray that the wicked one be removed, 
and the unreasonable person be removed also, Lord. I pray, Father, that they walk in the joy, the gladness, and the laughter that you have placed in them, Lord. Father, let there be no accidents, no breakdowns, no flat tires, not even a ticket, just a safe passage to and from this place. I thank you for the love that you bestowed upon every one of us, that you call us your sons. We love you, Lord, because you loved us first. We love you right back right now. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. All right, guys, hug on somebody, shake somebody's hand before you leave. Oh, we're going to take a picture. Don't leave. Get Pastor Eric over here.